Well, as you're given, let me get started here. Uh, I don't have a long message, but I do have an important one. And if you turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I've titled this, The End of the World, Plan B. I'm going to read, starting verse 1 from my NIV. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and being gathered to Him. Okay, that's the catching away. We're gathered to Him. We ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy report or letter supposed to have come from us saying that the day of the Lord has already come. <clears throat> Notice in verse 1, it's mentioning two things concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to Him. We have two events, return to Christ. We have the catching away that Paul mentions in 1 Thessalonians 4. <clears throat> and then we have the return of Christ mentioned in Revelation chapter 19, where Christ comes to, after the seven-year time of God's wrath poured out upon the earth called the Great Tribulation. At the end of the time, at the Battle of Armageddon, Jesus Christ comes riding in a white horse with all the saints. We'll take a look at that passage in Revelation 19 in a moment. But notice that verse 1 addresses two events, okay? This passage is a passage that some believe from this passage that Jesus Christ will come in the middle of the seven year of tribulation. They call that mid-trib. I always say Jesus is going to come. There's going to be a catching away. You just better be ready. I don't care if it's pre, mid, or post. He's going to come. Uh, I, I always say, I, I just call it pan trib. It'll all pan out in the end because Jesus is going to come. And those that are wrong will find out. And those that are right will find out. And, and, and it's just going to happen. Uh, now, I obviously think I'm right and you all wrong. But uh, that's, I, mean, I always think that way. But anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's just where I look at it that way. It says, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the some prophecy. Verse 2, report or letter supposed to have come from us saying the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs of, of the man of lawlessness, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. I want you to underline two words there, deceive you, don't let anyone deceive you, and then the word destruction at the end of verse 3. He will oppose and ex will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. This is also mentioned in Matthew 24. It's mentioned again in the book of Revelation that in the middle of the seven years of tribulation that there will be a declaration of the lawless one to declare everybody, take, put himself in the temple in Jerusalem and declare that everybody bows down and worships me. This is... This is Satan himself. This is Satan revealed uh, as God is three in himself, the beast, the false prophet, uh, the, the devil, uh, Satan himself. And so uh, it picks up in verse 5 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things, and now you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time. Uh, I believe, and many people believe what's holding back the lawlessness one from stepping up right now is the Spirit of God, God's power, God's will, and uh, God's church, of the, which His Spirit resides in. Now listen to me a second. The Spirit of the Antichrist has been on this earth urging and moving forward, wanting to be in control forever, for the whole time since Christ ascended up into heaven on, in Acts chapter 1 before their eyes those that were there that day in Acts 1 on the, uh, just before the day of Pentecost. We've seen it in the forms of, of such like as Hitler and now the crazy man over in North Korea and uh, many other people that the spirit of Antichrist wanting to rule and reign is upon them. They don't even know that, but it's, it's, it is the case. And, uh, but it, that will not be revealed until the time that that God allows it. Verse 7, for the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. I'm back verse 7 again. But the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and the destroy by the splendor of his coming. When I read verse 19, 
Revelation 19 in a minute, you'll see those words right there in Revelation 19 when Jesus comes at his second coming. So that's when the destruction will come to pass. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan displayed, look at this, in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs and wonders, and in every sort of evil that deceives, there's the word again, deceives those, Satan deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion. Underline in your Bible the word delusion. We have three words, deceive, destruction, and delusion. He sends a powerful delusion so that, that, that uh, they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. The King James in verse number 12 says that all may be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness, which I believe is much clearer. And he also says in verse 11, for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. The first thing from our passage that I want you to see, and I had you mention this word deception or deceive you. You see, Many people in the world are trying to deceive others. They deceive by saying things like uh, that, you know, you got to be politically correct and you got to be careful not to offend that, that you know, uh, the others, others are sincere in their faith and, and their God that is dead. But the Bible says there is an offense. It's the, it's the offense that Jesus said that he brings a double-edged sword. And the offense is that that there's no other name but the name of Jesus where a person could be saved. And many a people are deceiving people in our land. And many a people that call themselves ministers are preaching a false, uh, a false gospel. And it's a gospel of grace that has no faith. It's a gospel of grace that, that undermines anything about obedience to God and holiness before God. It's a gospel that basically is universal salvation that basically says Jesus died once for all and all will be there if you just believe in this person called Jesus. But believing in Jesus isn't enough. James said it in his book. He says the demons believe and tremble. But and, and as he speaks and he says, take Abraham, for instance, who was justified by his works, or in other words, by his obedience. And here's the thing. Faith in itself is not just belief, but it's trusting and obeying. And I'm going to tell you that there's a deception in our world. Many people think they're on the way to heaven, and they are not. And there's going to be a trumpet sound I spoke of last week. And an angel, there's going to be a shout of the Lord. And uh, the, the dead who are in the graves in Christ, their bodies are going to rise up and those who are living on earth are going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And some are deceived, believing that they're okay and they're not. Jesus speaks of it in Matthew 24 when he says, and some of you will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not done many wonderful works in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You see, G the relationship with Jesus is a relationship where you know him. He walks with you and he talks with you. He's in you. He's full in you. And there's a deception of mankind and a preaching that's not preaching the salvation of repentance that Jesus talked about, that John talked about to repent. One that says now there is no literal hell. You know that is so popular now. There is no hell, period. And they've rewritten God's law on morality. And I want to tell you something, the book is still true, it's the truth, it's when I was 20, when I was 6 years old, when I was 10 years old, the book hasn't changed, Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever, and there is a standard that God demands and it's a standard that we can only live when he comes and changes our heart and he comes and gives us power, the power of his spirit that takes our life and puts to death our old man and makes a new man alive. And there's a real salvation in that. And I want to tell you, there's deception in our world, but there is also, as our text mentioned, the deceiver who is Satan, who, who will deceive people. He deceives them in this last time, the last days, uh, during this time of great tribulation by doing miracles. And Revelation speaks of it. 
Paul mentions it here, but Paul didn't write Revelation. John did. And he mentions it there, that there'll be these miracles that'll happen. And, uh, and people will be deceived. Even the elect, many that, that are cons- quote unquote, they'll be deceived. And some people think that people that are saved will still be on earth during this time of wrath. But I don't think so. And, and I'll show you that in a minute when I finish with Revelation 19. The Bible says in many places, God has not chosen to us to experience wrath. But many people go, but that doesn't mean we're, we're, uh, we're, uh, there, there's no like uh, escape clause that we won't face tribulation. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, you know, already the world has faced horrors like you can't believe. The Holocaust, and, and you go back in history and read about things that have happened. And I'm telling you, we could, we could face all kinds of things. And in fact, right now in lands, people are being sawed in half and shot. They're sawing children in front of their, in Muslim countries, in front of their parents right now, uh, and killing them because they're Christians. Did you know that? They're wiping the Christians out in certain countries. Right now, they're wiping them off the face of the earth, murdering them. So I'm not saying there won't be persecution. Jesus said you'll be persecuted. I'm not saying there won't be uh, trouble and, and, and you know, even loss of life and martyrdom. At 11 of Jesus' disciples. Or that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about the wrath of God in the seven-year period called the Great Tribulation that begins, but I believe, According to Revelation 4, 1, that begins when the trumpet sounds, and now that it begins and it grows stronger and stronger and stronger. At the end of that time, then, then, and during that time, Satan is going to deceive many people. Okay? He's a deceiver. Second thing, the word was uh, the delusion. If you'll notice at the end of this text that God, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says in verse 10, Satan is with deceiving of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth. They receive not the love of the truth, meaning the truth was given to them, but they, they did not receive it that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strongly. Who send them the delusion? God is. Why? Because they rejected during the day of grace the truth that they could be saved. That's why. They rejected it for this cause. Why? Because they received not the love of the truth, verse 10, that they could be saved. Verse 11, and for this cause, God sends them strong delusion. God sends it that they should believe a lie, that they all may be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Here's what I'm going to tell you. End of the world, plan B does not exist. And while I love people that have preached this message, they're wrong. What to do if you miss the rapture? If they're given the gospel, you know the gospel. If you miss the rapture, you won't even know you missed the rapture. Are you going to believe a lie because God's going to stand strong delusion and there is no way you can refuse the mark of the beast or that you can get saved then? Who's going to be saved then? People that have never heard. The Jews who probably haven't heard, I, I mean, I think there's 144,000 in that time. And during that seven-year period, this is what we're talking about. If you go, you know what, I, I, I just mess around. I don't respond to Jesus. And then the rapture happens, and you know enough Bible that you go, oh, oh, the rapture happened. And you think, oh, I'm not going to do it. No, you're going to be deceived because this guy that's doing all the miracles, this antichrist, this guy that's de- deceiving, is doing miracles, you're going to believe it and you're going to believe the lie and you will not get a chance, a second chance. So just mark it in your book. It says it right there. And if you disagree with me, again, you're wrong. Unless it's Brother Tostin, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Am I right, Pastor Tostin? I'm right. Thank you, Pastor Tostin. Uh, By the way, Pastor Tostin is a genius, and he's a great theologian, and he's a better theologian than anybody in here. Uh, Well, Gary's pretty good, too. But anyway, beyond that, uh, last thing here. So there's that second word. I want you to see the word uh, deception of of man and of Satan and of of the lies and the darkness of this this world. And you see the word in there uh, that God will send delusion. And then I want you to see the word destruction. For he goes on and he says um, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in righteousness. Verse 12 and, the, and verse 12 in the NIV, so that they will be condemned who have not believed the truth but delighted in wickedness. Uh, there's a word destruction. I told you to mark it. But anyway, 
it's, it's in that passage because I, I found those three words that begin with D and I thought that was pretty cool. But there is a destruction coming. And that's the problem is the enemy wants you destroyed and he wants your family destroyed and he wants everybody destroyed. The thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Mort Henderson taught me this. He said, what's the thief stealing? Your faith. Why do you think that we have in our colleges and everywhere people getting talked out of their faith? They want to steal your faith to make you not believe. You know, and I, I, I don't understand all that, but if he steals your faith, steal, kill, then he kills your body, then steal, kill, and destroy. He destroys his destruction, his damnation. And I'm telling you right now, the Bible says, as you see all these things to come to pass, he that endures unto the end, the same will be saved. Jesus said it in Matthew 24. Now we, we turn to Revelation 19 to conclude. Revelation chapter 19. And now as I've mentioned and read in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, verses 1 to 12, now listen, begin to Revelation 19 verse 11, and you'll see the correlation. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? And he beheld, our, we beheld his glory, even of the only begotten Son of God, the only begotten uh, 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 one of the Lord. The Word of God, he, the armies of heaven, this is Jesus, the armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. That's the picture of the church. It's all symbolic of what's true. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword, which will, should, which, with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and his thigh, he has his name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in midair, come, to, come gather together for the great supper of God so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, mighty men, of horses and their riders and the flesh of all people, free and slaves, small and great. And then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth, their armies gathered together to make war against the rider of the horse and his army. This is right in the battle of Armageddon. This is right in that big valley we talked about uh, last week. And uh, there in Israel where some of us have been and we've seen it's beautiful, it's huge. And uh, Jesus is coming back. They're coming against Israel, all of the land. They're coming against, and Israel is hated in our nation. Look at verse 20. But the beast, the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. With these signs he had deluded, he, he deluded, delusion, those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them of the beast and worshipped, the two, the two of them rather were thrown alive into the fire lake of burning sulfur. The rest of them were killed with the sword that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse, and all the bir birds gorged themselves on their flesh. And then the thousand year reign, as chapter 20 is titled, The Thousand Years. The Thousand Years Came. So we've got, as I mentioned last week, we have the, the, the catching away of the church, the, the word, the man made word. To describe that the rapture of catching away this mentioned by Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4. And then we have seven years of great tribulation, the wrath of God poured out. And the Bible mentions that in, in, in many different places that it's clear that what's happening in these seven years is God's wrath. He doesn't come as Savior, He comes as judge. And then during that time, we're in heaven, the believers, and we're, we're at the marriage supper of the Lamb, we're at the rewards banquet. And the, wor the works that we did that, that weren't of right motives, they're burned up like wood, hay, and stubble. But, but we're, we're still saved, or that which it might be like gold and silver. And then so during that seven-year period, we're in heaven. And then we come back at the end of that time and have this big war. And then Satan is released for a time, and he's, he's thrown, into a, thrown into the bottomless pit for a time there. And then a thousand years on earth where Jesus reigns. And when that's done, 
then Satan is let out for a little while. There's one last war, and he's thrown in forever. The dead, the wicked dead, are raised up out of the graves and are judged, and that's when they are sent to hell by God. Here's the thing. Why is it important to even talk about this stuff? Why is it important? Here's why. I believe it's as clear and simple as can be. Watch and be ready. Watch and be ready. Live ready for the Lord to come. And he that has a hope purifies himself. Someone accuses us sometimes, and others have, of preaching this fear stuff. Well, why is it fearful? It's not fearful. It's a warning that these are things that are going to come to pass. And Jesus has provided a way out. He's provided salvation. And whatever, you know, maybe some of us lose our life. It doesn't mean that Jesus isn't with us. Eleven of the disciples did. It doesn't mean the great tribulation has started. So I don't know how it's all going to come down. And I know, I, I really, I really am going Maybe I'm wrong. I, I really am saying, but I don't think I am because I stated out my own. Some of you think I was indoctrinated by the Assemblies of God, but I wasn't. I was more Southern Baptist than Assembly of God. Well, I think they think the same thing. And, uh, you know, and other people have some other thoughts on that. But it doesn't really matter, does it? What matters is let's walk with God, occupy until he comes. Let's pur purify ourselves even as he is pure, knowing that we will stand before God someday. And be ready. The maker's coming. But don't be fearful. It's time to, as Rebecca said, share Jesus because there is a reckoning day coming, a day of God's wrath. And I, I don't want you to hold on to rapture roulette like, okay, maybe maybe I'll be right, right at that moment, you know, like playing, uh, what is that when you, yeah, shooting yourself and you only got one bullet, you know. You better have more bullets in your gun for faith than you do playing that game. You better fill that gun up, you know, and be ready every day. Because if you're only ready on Sunday, you know, and I don't understand all that. I, I'm, I'm not trying to figure that out. All I know is I know I'm saved. You can know you're saved. God hasn't given us uh, insecure faith. We have a blessed assurance. These things are written that you might know that you have eternal life. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're the sons of God. And you can walk with God and know God is your Savior. But here's the thing. There is going to be people that are going to be in heaven, according to Jesus' story, that are going to think they were okay. In fact, argue with Jesus himself that I ought to be in. And it sounds like they're Pentecostal people. Because they cast out demons and do all that stuff. Here's the thing. Don't let emotion fool you that you're saved. Take a look at obedience. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Your heart. You follow after God. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness for this night, for a great day with great missionaries. We want to be ready, Lord, and we just want to walk close to you, God. Every day we walk out the door, this could be the dawning of the day. Maranatha, Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. May we be ready waiting, looking for you. In Jesus' name.